UFC Paris is coming up in a couple weeks, and today, guys, I have the complete betting guide for you with timestamps if you'd like to skip to any part of the video. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I am your guy with many YouTube channels. We're going to be talking about my confident picks on the card, underdog opportunities, fights that I do not believe you should be betting on, my personal lock of the week, and then we're going to end things off with a little bit of a fun part of the video, seeing what, what props are available and if, if, if there are any ridiculous parlays that we can make. We're going to talk about all of it today, and guys, again, Timestamps are there, gonna be there if you'd like to skip to any part of the video. Now, guys, let's get started with the confident picks on the card. The first confident pick I have for you guys being Morgan Sherrier. Now, it is important to note, as with all these betting guide videos I do, I already have a full card breakdown video out if you guys are interested in seeing that, where I dive as, as deep into these fights as I could possibly get. So, these are gonna be more of a brief reason as to why I think these fighters are gonna win. And for this fighter, I am picking Morgan Sherrier. I think that he is the real deal. And the real deal, and I don't mean that in the sense where I'm not convinced he can be champion or a top five fighter or anything like that. I believe he is just way past the Gabriel Mirandas of the division. I was so, so impressed by his Chepe Mariscal win. That was a robbery. He absolutely did not lose this fight. I was so impressed with him. He out Chepe Chepe, and you guys know how highly I might hold Chepe Mariscal as a fighter. But it's not just that fight. Morgan Sherrier. Seems like he is absolutely the real deal. I can't wait to watch him fight, and I think that he's really, really going to shine in this fight. The next confident pick I have for you guys, and honestly, guys, I almost had him as a lock. I'm feeling really, 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 really good about Matt Favola in this fight. I think it's just a good matchup for him. I think with Faraz ZM being as safe as he is, Matt Favola won't care, and I don't think that Faraz ZM is as good technically to be able to stop a guy that will walk forward like Matt Favola and try to take his head off. Matt Favola will make Faraz ZM uncomfortable, and the wrestling option will be there, which is a little bit of a hole in Faraz ZM's game. I think that just for this matchup in particular, we do have questions about Matt Favola. Like, I understand him just getting knocked out. You got to worry about the way he's coming back, but this matchup in particular, I'm feeling really, really good about Matt Favola. I think he's going to get the job done. Next up, guys, a little bit of a not-so-technical breakdown on this one, but my next confident pick is going to be Joe Anderson Brito. The reason being that I think Joe Anderson Brito is so violently talented and good at what he does that I have been betting on Joe Anderson Brito over and over again, and I'm going to continue betting on Joe Anderson Brito. I've been very open about this until the wheels fall off. I'm going to pick Joe Anderson Brito, and I'm going to bet on Joe Anderson Brito until he loses. Then I'll reevaluate re things. William Gomez looks like he's a great fighter, and he hasn't taken on anybody to the level of Joe Anderson Brito, in my opinion. I just think that this dude is... Next level violent, next level tough, and I think that he's going to go far in the division. So I'm picking Joe Anderson Brito. Very, very confident in him to get the job done. And the final confident pick I have for you guys before we move on, guys, is going to be Benoit St. Denis. I just think he's better. I, I hope, and I've been talking about this in my full card breakdown, I hope I'm wrong on this one because I love Moicano. But I think that there is a difference in just skill level here. I think that Benoit St. Denis, his last fight was a little bit of a fluke. He belongs at the top of the division. He is a top five lightweight, and Hanato Moicano just isn't. There's always the potential for Moicano to catch him in a submission, but I think that even then, Benoit St. Denis has equal to, if not better, BJJ. I think he's tougher. I think he's more violent. I think he's better in all aspects of MMA, and I'm going to be picking him to win this fight. Very confident in him to get the job done. Now, guys, let's talk about some underdog opportunities. These are fighters that I'm not necessarily picking to win or confident to win. I'm just saying that if you're looking to place a value bet, it would not shock me at all if these fighters got the win and they are underdogs. The first underdog opportunity I have for you guys is Victor Altamirano. I think that he's improving every single time that we see him. I think he is an extremely capable fighter. He is an I think he is way better than people are giving him credit for. Even just in his last fight against Felipe DeSantos, he showed an evolution in his game. Another robbery like we we're talking about. He absolutely won this fight. I think that he's going to win this fight. I'm not majorly confident in him, but I think that he's going to win the fight. And I think that he's, if he stays at an underdog, I think he's worth putting some money down on. Now, one that I don't know if it's a good idea to bet on, but I can absolutely see winning is Nora Cornhole. I think that Jacqueline, Jacqueline Cavalcanti, you have to worry about her because she just fought at the time of recording this video over two weeks ago. She's going through another weight cut. She's taking this fight on short notice. She didn't have a training camp specifically for Nora Cornhole. And you always have to worry about girls in the division like Nora Cornhole. One that is actually violent. One that actually tries to really, really hurt you. And I think that stuff matters. Violent intent matters in the Bantamweight division for women, okay? I think that's actually very important to know. I think if Jacqueline, though, had a full training camp and I wasn't worried about another weight cut, 
she would probably get the win. I don't know who I'm picking here. I've been a little bit back and forth, leaning towards Cavalcanti, but I think that Nora Cornell absolutely has a chance to win this fight. And if you're looking for an underdog, I think that's one to maybe, maybe consider. Now, guys, let's talk about a few fights that I do not believe that you should be betting on. I think you should stay away from these fights. The first one being Ion Kitalaba versus Ivan Urslan. Long story short, because Ion Kitalaba, you never know what's going to happen with this guy. He is a he's one of those fighters that comes in, either kills somebody or gets chinned. I think you're crazy. I think you're throwing your money on red if you're betting on Ion Kitalaba. Stay away from all of his fights. The next fight that I believe you guys should be staying away from is Aylin Perez versus Daria Zelazinikova, the Iron Lady versus Fiona. I just don't know who's going to win this fight. I think it's a low-level fight. That's it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's continue on. A little bit of the opposite in what I had to say, okay? Kevin Set versus Brian Battle is another fight that I don't believe you should be betting on. If I had to imagine, I would imagine that a lot of people are taking the Brian Battle side. But I think that these are just two very, very talented prospects and good at what they do. Both of them are capable of winning. Both of them are actively improving when we see them. And I don't know who's going to get the win here. Slightly lean towards Battle, but... I, I'm not going to put my money anywhere near this fight, in my opinion, unless, like, the maybe over 1.5 is really, really valuable, but I don't even think that'll be the case. Now, guys, before we talk about my personal lock of the week, I want to put a pause on the video for just a second. If you want to, if you don't want to hear me yet, skip about 30 seconds to a minute. I talk a lot about betting on this channel. If you guys are interested in hearing where I put my money, where my mouth is, either that or just supporting the channel, you can check out the channel membership in the pinned comment description down below or right next to the subscribe button every single Thursday or Friday before an event. I will be posting a community post and a members-only video explaining what exactly I'm doing with my own money, the bets that I'm making. I don't know what's going on next weekend. Actually, I haven't taken a look at it, but we might be, unfortunately, skipping weeks. So I just want to be honest with you guys. If you're looking to sign up for, to either just <laughs> combine my fight knowledge with your own betting side, if you want to do anything of that sort, I suggest that nobody ever blindly tails, right? Combine my fight knowledge with your own research. If you're looking to do that, then I would wait a week to sign up, to be honest with you. Just trying to get the most out of your membership, of course, right? But it is very cheap compared to other channels. So if you're looking to either do that or just flat out support the channel, I appreciate either way. Also, a tool that we use on this channel a lot is Odds Jam. You can check that out in the pinned comment description down below. It's fantastic for serious sports betters. Has a lot of different tools, a lot of different sports books. If you'd like to sign up to Odds Jam, you can check my link in the pinned comment description down below and use code CLENBAT and you can get a discount signing up, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Let's get into my personal Lock of the week. The fighter on the card that I believe has as close to 100% winning the fight is going to be, excuse me, Ludovic Klein. Unfortunately, I'm just convinced of him. He's steamrolling people, and I think he's going to steamroll Roosevelt Roberts, somebody who is, he's okay, but he is subpar compared to Ludovic Klein and what we've seen from him. I was officially convinced of Ludovic Klein after his win over Tiago Moises, but in reality, I should have been convinced of him even just before that. Like, the dude even got a win over Ignacio Baja Mendez, which looked really, really good. He's been in the UFC for a while now. He's proven that he's a real deal, and I think that he's just going to kind of dominate Roosevelt Roberts. That is the fighter that I believe has the biggest chance of winning on the entire card. Now, guys, let's move on to a little bit more of the fun part of the video, talking about any props that are available right now. And the problem is, usually there's not really a lot available at the moment, so let's take a look over at Odds Jam over here. And you can see there isn't a ton available right now. You have Ludwig Klein, Roosevelt Roberts, over 2.5 is plus money. Staying away from that one. Umar Sai, Dawoon Jung, over 1.5 minus 125. I actually don't hate that, but it's still something I'd stay away from. Daniel Brez, Victor Altamirano, over 2.5. No thank you. Nasser Dini, Mavov, Brennan Allen. I forgot to talk about that fight. Good job, Kyle. <laughs> Brennan Allen was an underdog opportunity of mine. <laughs> I'll speak on that for just a second. Brendan Allen, I believe, when the fight is three rounds, he's one of the best middleweights of all time. Problem is, once you get into the championship rounds, I think that he could absolutely beat Imavov in a three-round fight. But Imavov is really, really good as well. So maybe maybe it's best we didn't touch on that. So other than that, over 2.5. I actually don't hate that. I actually don't hate that at minus 166 right now. I don't hate that at all. Morgan Sherrier, Gabriel Miranda, over 2.5 is minus 111. I don't like that. So, actually, one that I would consider touching is Nasadine Mavov versus Brendan Allen, but I want to see what the over 1.5 is personally because I don't like I don't like waiting the whole fight for my bets to hit. Now, guys, continuing on with another little bit of fun part of a video, I'm going to bring you guys back over to Betway, which I'm excited to say that I finally, after so long, have moved sportsbooks. I'm on Bet365 right now, but I just like the, I like the interface of Betway, to be honest with you. So, I'm going to keep doing these videos 
on Betway. I was sick of them being late to everything, but <laughs> let's take a look. And again, a little bit of a fun part of the video, guys. Not taking anything seriously. Let's just pick some fights and see what we get over here. First of all, well, something that my sister and I do every week, we talk about this, is we bet 10 cents on every underdog. Just, you never know, man. It's 10 cents. It's no big deal. 10 cents gets you. That's actually very poor compared to what we usually get. Anyways, so that where, could you imagine if that's the one we win? But I mean, like eight grand isn't anything to go crazy about. So let's just pick some fights, maybe some confident picks like Benoit St. Denis, Joe Anderson Brito, Morgan Sherrier, uh, Matt Frivola. Those two together, almost four times your money. I would stay away from parlays be typically because something's bound to go wrong in this sport. Like Victor Altamirano himself, like if you want to bet an underdog, like Matt Frivola is somebody like those are odds that I would just hit at by itself, to be honest with you. I'm a little bit more safe, but even if you want to add Ludovic Klein to that, like Matt Frivola, Ludovic Klein, who else did I say over here? Uh, Morgan Sherrier, Joyner Sombrito, and then Benoit St. Denis all together. That's almost five times your money. I actually don't mind that. Maybe I'll, maybe that could be like a part of the fun parlay. We have a fun parlay that I throw five bucks at every single time. That I don't mind, to be honest with you. But even if you want to get a little bit risky, like, let's see. If you want to get a little bit risky, like maybe Victor Altamirano. If you're really feeling tough about yourself, Victor Altamirano and Brennan Allen together. Oof, that's pretty good. But even then, just that underdog opportunities. Like, Brennan Allen is good value for an underdog just by itself. I wish we could... I wish the props were out so early, man. I wish that would be the case. But even just, like, putting Benoit Saint-Denis and Joyner Sombrito together, that's almost double your money, which I personally really like. That's something that I would consider doing. But there's a lot of potential for this card. I think it's pretty good for betting. I think there's there won't be a lot of upsets this time around. But then again, this sport that we watch, this UFC thing that we like watching, there's never a safe bet. There's never a lock, guys. Let me know what you thought about all of the picks down below, what you're thinking about the card, if there's anything that you're doing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to hear me dive into the fights as deep as we can possibly get, check out the full card breakdown on screen right now, guys. I would love to have you over there or in the next video. Take care, everybody.